Welcome to another project video on my channel. And this time, as you can see, this is going to be a PCB project from PCBWay. And I have created a component tester for my Flipper Zero. It's not really a, a full component tester, but uh, I wanted to use free specific application on the Flipper Zero, uh, which, uh, well, is going to help me to, you know, test various components. So it is going to be my sort of like cyber deck. And uh, this is an application one, which is called the I squared C tools. And the other one is the temp sensor reader. And the third one is the servo tester. This board will allow me to use these, uh, these three programs to test temperature sensor. For example, this one, this one, and that one and uh, I squared C uh, devices. So I would be able to test if they work. And if I don't know what the I squared C address is, it will be able to tell me. And I can also test servos. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is a manufacturer of all type of PCBs, offered PCB prototyping services, but you can also order fully assembled PCBs as well. If you need flexible PCBs, you are covered too. Besides PCBs, they also offer CNC machine services, 3D printing as well, with a huge selection of materials and printing technology. I am an absolute beginner when it comes to electronics and PCB design, and all my projects are about designing special boards where I use development boards and maybe some passive components. But I have to tell you that these boards are already light years from the breadboard projects in terms of looks and reliable operation. And these PCBs really turn my prototype projects to live projects that I will use for the years to come. If you like my projects, I always link a link to my PCB that you can order directly from PCBWay. Or if you want to buy a different board or service from them, please use my referral code, which you will also find in the video description. So this is the PCB that I have created. And well, there is nothing really on the, on the underside. But what you can see here is that on the top, I have a servo tester. So this is the servo pl uh, plug. And then I have a plug for a DHT. And I created a four pin version and the three pin version as well, depending on what, uh, you know, whether you have to just a chip or maybe a development board. I have another footprint also for a Dallas uh, one wire sensor with a pull up resistor, which you normally put between the VDD and the data lines. And I also have three, two, sorry, two pins for I squared C. And the reason I have two pins because uh, based on the I squared C devices that I have at home, it looks like that the pinout is either ground VCC SCL or SDA, or VCC ground SCL or SDA. So you would be able to use either of these two connectors to connect your I squared C sensor. And you should, well, you have to be sure that you are actually using the correct pinout, otherwise you are going to burn your module, just like I did with my BMP680. When I wanted to test this and I, I accidentally put it into the wrong uh, socket, so VCC ground was flipped around and the magic smoke has uh, disappeared, or well, actually it's appeared. So that's the board and I'm going to show you how I can use it to test various devices. And of course, I will have a link in the video description and just uh, with my other project, this is going to be a PCB shared project. So you can order the same PCB from PCB way and then you can just add the headers. And you don't really need anything other than these right angle headers, which go into the flipper zero. And you need a couple of male and female headers for the top. And that's pretty much it. So let's get started. And I think I will start with the easy one, with a servo first. So I'm just going to plug this in to the, um, I always want to say Raspberry Pi, but it's a Flipper Zero. But I mean, technically it's a Raspberry Pi inside. Well, a Raspberry Pi Zero, this is called a Flipper Zero. So now I'm going to connect my servo and I have all the um, uh, things labeled. So ground is on this side, so that's going to be the black. So the wire goes in like that. So black, red, and white. And for this, I need to do two things. So first of all, I need to go out and I need to, sorry, go out and I go into GPIO. And here I need to turn on the five volt output. And I check again, it's on. 
uh, because otherwise by default the 5 volt output is off. So now I go to application, GPIO and the servo tester is the last one. So now you can see that it works. And what really happens here, well what really happened now is I think you know there is a protection built into the Raspberry Pi Zero and this is quite a beefy servo motor so I think when I switched it on and then it was just moving the other direction it actually just triggered probably like a you know a switch off of the 5 volt output so it wasn't moving anymore so you should either use a smaller servo and you definitely need to use it without any load otherwise uh, the you know the flipper is just going to switch off the 5 volt output but as you can see if I just move it incrementally then it works if I try to make any bigger movement when the servo draws a higher current then it's just going to switch off the 5 volt output but the good news is at least it does that and it's not going to de de damage the um, you know your flipper zero now it works you see now it stopped because the GPIO is, uh, is now turned off so anyway, that's the whole thing about the, yeah, you can see the GPIO is off. So this is the, uh, the thing about the servo tester. I only have this really big servo, but if you have one of the smaller servos, it should work without any issues. But at least you can see that there is failsafe built into the Flipper Zero. So out of the temperature sensor, first I want to show you this uh, DALA sensor. Well, actually I wanted to show you this sensor, and it was working fine before I... Um, uh, well before I started recording but now it's just not working and I couldn't figure out I cannot figure out why so I'm just going to show you how it's supposed to work but it's not going to work so I connect the sensor so this is the connection for the DALA sensor and that's how you connect it so black is on the left uh, red is on the right and then the middle data is on the well that's on the middle and I go back to this application GPIO and it's called the temp sensor reader and be, by default it says no sensor found so I just go add and Dallas oops this one and here I can just uh, I select a7 and I should supposed to do scan and then you know previously what it did it showed me the address of this um, thingy and it's just not doing that at the moment and before that I didn't have the small pull-up resistor soldered because again if you are using a module sometimes the resistor is soldered so this is not a module so I would, normally I would need the resistor but it was working without a resistor I guess it depends on cable length and everything so, but I put a resistor in but it's not helping so unless you get the ID here you can't save it because you know it waits for this um, the address of the sensor determined and it should read the address but it doesn't do so I'm guessing, I mean, I have this for years, maybe it's just broken, and, uh, but normally, this is how you do that, and then, you know, if this would work, you save it, and then the temperature appears here on the screen, so, let's move on, because this is broken, I can't show you, so, according to my, you know, flipper zero, this temperature sensor is not working, but let's, some, let's test something, for example, this uh, DHT22, which looks a little bit melted. I don't know what happened there, but anyway, so this uh, plugs into this four pin hole, and this is a DHT22, so I can add DHT22. It's on the A7, and then we save, and then we get the reading immediately. So I, if I put my hand and we just wait a little, then the temperature, yeah, the temperature is going to climb slowly. So this temperature sensor is definitely working. By the way, now the application remembers it. So if you unplug it, then it's just going to tell you just put to put the module back in. Uh, but of course, if you would put in like a DHT2011, then again, you just need to add as a new device. Okay, so this is how you test the DHT sensor, well, in any of the DHT type. And let's also test something which is an I squared C sensor. So I have here, um, an SHT21, we see, which is uh, temperature and humidity as well. And here you can see that it says V in ground SCLSDA. And here I have VCC ground SC, 
uh, SCLSD. So this is how I need to plug this in. And by the way, here the VCC is 3.3 volts, so you can only use sensors that work with 3.3 or 5 volts as well. So I'm just going to plug this in, and I'm going to add this as a new sensor. So it is SHT21X. The address is 40. Well, we assume that's the default address, and then we save. And now we can see that it shows the temperature and the humidity. And if I put my hand over it, then we can see that the temperature goes up. And by the way, now it shows both of these sensors. So if I go left, I can see the HT22 and I can see the other one as well. And I think that's pretty much all the sensors I have. Again, I said that I have a BMP680, which I managed to brick, so I can't really show you that. And I don't have anything else. I have a BHP280 somewhere as well, but um, it is used in a project, so I can't show it here. And by the way, you can see the, the different type of sensors this application supports. So quite a few, a lot of stuff that I don't even have. So that's how I use this temp temperature sensor reader. And the last application is the I2C tools. So for that, well, I already have this guy connected and we know that it is on address 40 because it, uh, well, it works. Uh, I mean, it already worked. But what I would use this I2C tools is just to scan for the devices. So if I have a device which I, let's say I don't have a data sheet, I don't remember what the default address is, I can just plug it in and I can scan. And then it says that one device is found and it's at address 40. So yeah, it works. And it does have some other features as well. So you can, you know, you can uh, sniff the data. But obviously, if you want to sniff the data, you would need another device, which sort of you need the uh, flipper zero in between, let's say, a microcontroller and your device, which I can't really simulate here. And then you can also send messages, but I don't know what messages to send to this guy and if it would respond with anything. But I mean, probably you can, there is a value for, you know, requesting data, but I have no idea what that is. So I don't think I'm going to use this function. I mean, mostly I'm going to use it to scan so I can verify that the device works and I can verify, verify the address of it. So if I remove this and I take this i square c sensor, so again, it says, ground so this starts with a ground so it plugs into the other port like this nothing is going to show on the sensor because all it does it determines it you know it queries the i square i squared c bus and it queries for a device so it's not a screen tester but you can see that the default um oled is on 3c which is uh yeah that's the default address and by the way i think there is a jumper here you can you can change uh, the default address so if we, let me, uh, I guess maybe you can have that solder bridge and it changes the default address. But if I check this other one, so this one is again ground VCC, SCLSDA. So this one plugs into just like the previous one. Oops. And if I scan, this one is on 3C as well. So yeah, handy little device to test uh, the i square c screens. Well, i square c devices and, for example, screens and temperature and humidity sensor. So this is all what this small unit does. So I, again, servos, DHTs, Dallas, and i square c sensors. And then it has the application to sort of scan the i square c bus, display temperature sensors, and test the servo. So. I think that will be pretty much it if you want this small PCB. So if you want this small PCB, I'm going to leave a link in the video description, which is going to direct you to my PCB project page. And well, there you can just purchase the PCB. You can order them from PCB way. You can, you know, order one or four or, you know, five, whatever number you need. And then all you need is a bunch of, uh, you know, headers in order to you know connect them to the raspberry pi and also raspberry pi the flipper zero and also put these headers on and that's pretty much it very simple project but i think it's going to be quite useful for me so that's all for today thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video